Giants have two first-round picks. Do you trust Dave Gettleman with those picks? No. No, I don't. And I'm rooting for Gettleman. He's the GM of my favorite team, I want, of, of the team I root for. Mm -hmm. I want the Giants to succeed. In order for that to happen in the short term, Gettleman has to succeed. And it's not Stephen A that I don't think – he, can, he, like, he can't identify talent. I know he can identify talent. He's really a scout at heart. He knows what he's looking at. I wouldn't pretend to know what I'm looking at compared to him, right? I understand that, of course. Um, but that's not the job of a GM. The job of a GM is to optimize your resources, to successfully and skillfully exploit uh, uh, your resources to your advantage. Gettleman's not good at that. Gettleman didn't listen to offers for the number two pick last year because he was sure about Saquon Barkley. I agree. Saquon Barkley is the greatest running back prospect who ever lived. He might be the best running back who ever lived when it's all said and done. And yet that doesn't mean you should listen to offers for the pick mm -hmm. in this modern NFL. Uh, reportedly, the Niners would have made a better offer than the Browns uh, for Odell. What, what happened to that? What, what, you know? So do I believe – look, Stephen A., when he says this stuff about Eli, when he says this stuff – when he puts it out there leaking to certain reporters, we don't like any of these quarterbacks, pretty obviously a smokescreen, right? He doesn't want any team jumping over the Giants and grabbing Haskins. That way they can sit at six, grab Haskins, and then use the 17th pick for another impact player. But if I think that's what he's doing, you think other GMs don't know that's what he's doing? Mm -hmm. He's not slick. So, and you can't trust anything he says because he clearly thinks correctly it's okay to lie to the press in this situation for your advantage. My point is he's not good at it. He's not good at lying to the press. He doesn't have, you don't believe what he says. And on top of that, he has not skillfully exploited the draft. So, no, I don't. I trust he'll get a good player. He won't, he, who he selects will be good. But I do not trust him with the draft process. You look at Belichick. He gets the most out of that process. I do not believe Gettleman will. First of all, a couple of things. Number one, I just want to say, uh, before I even get into it, Godspeed to him because obviously he has some health issues, Dave Gettleman. And he looks really, really good right now. So I'm really happy about it. I know you. I know you. Of want to course. Know of course not. I'm just. I'm it just, is awesome that I'm Gettleman saying, is fighting the fight. And for personal reasons, right. obviously, to see him yeah. of looking course. like that. Great, great to him. I agree with you, but I think you have the wrong reasons as to why you shouldn't trust Gettleman. Gettleman is a two-time Super Bowl champion as an executive with the New York Giants, even though he wasn't the GM or whatever, okay? Uh, when he was there with the Carolina Panthers, got them to a 15-1 record in the Super Bowl berth. We're not questioning his ability to recognize talent. We're not questioning the philosophy of not drafting for need because you'll get screwed every time. We understand where he's coming from. Here's why you shouldn't trust Dave Gettleman. Because of what he's saying, about Eli Manning and the conviction with which he's saying it. Three to four games in the last season, you knew that D Eli Manning was virtually finished, that he didn't have much left. He was going down at the sight of the oncoming defenders. They didn't even touch him, and he was on the turf for crying out loud. He just looked that petrified. It's not a matter of him throwing the football. It's a matter of him being so punch drunk by getting hit so much in recent memory because they were devoid of a solid offensive line that ultimately he scares easy in terms of standing in the pocket and taking punishment, which is understandable when you're over 37 years of age. When you look at Gettleman speak the way that he speak, comes from that George Young, Ernie Accorsi, Jerry Reese line of succession. The fact that he's been synonymous with the New York Giants for so many years, 15 years as an executive, a senior pro player personnel analyst before being a pro personnel director, before leaving for Carolina. When you look at his resume and what he brings to the table, it's almost a lot about loyalty more than it is anything else. I love Eli Manning. He's a consummate professional. He's a good guy. So I'll go on public television, radio, and beyond and bloviate all the superlatives about him because I love him so much. Because that what that is what the New York Giants have prioritized. See, I don't think that's what it's about. I, I, the reason why I say it, the reason why I think it's what it's about is because I happen to believe that's a big reason why Odell Beckham Jr. is gone. They've denied it. I just don't believe it. I believe that if Odell Beckham Jr. was the kind of personality that they were comfortable with. That's a different I think he story. Would still be, I agree. I, I think he would still be there. And you know what else my proof is of that? Max, give me a justification as to why Pat Sherman's the head coach. And I'm not saying that Pat Sherman doesn't know football. I'm not saying he, doesn't, he shouldn't have a job in the NFL. I'm saying his resume prior to arriving to the New York Giants as a head coach when you're the New York Giants franchise and you prided yourself in being a gold standard per se – 
Tell me what, uh, what godly reason could you have to justify Pat Shermer being your guy? I it agree about that Odell. Because Kettle Gettleman was comfortable with I it. I agree about Odell, but I don't that. think that's why he's saying these things about Eli. This is my problem with Gettleman. Okay. There are some GMs who don't say much. They're buttoned up. Mm -hmm. Gettleman talks. Mm -hmm. The question is, what does he say? The reason he talks is his kind of strategy as GM, he thinks he's being very clever, is misdirection. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... But he's so bad at it. He's trying to be slick, and he's bad at it. So don't say, like, stop. Just stop. If you want Haskins and you think someone may, ju may jump you in the draft, go do your due diligence, find out if it's true, and trade up to get him. I mean, that's what you do. But this kind of stuff ain't going to work. And if he honest, like, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. because if he really believes Eli and can still play NFL well, Max, football but, 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 Max, what I'm saying is, with, with all due respect, your argument doesn't hold water if you truly, truly believe that he's lying. I'm saying to you, the only justification, if he's lying, the only justification is that he loves the guy. They value Eli Manning, and they're so appreciative no, they're of what to he throw, did. He's trying to throw people off the no, scent. No, no, no. Okay, that's fine. But what I'm saying to you is that even in the process of throwing people off the scent, there are a multitude of ways you could do it rather than saying what you said. you got to remember, before they knew they were going to have the number six pick in the NFL draft, he was saying these kind of things about Eli Manning. He's been praising Eli Manning since he walked through the door. So clearly there's an elevated level of affection that they have for this man because he's synonymous with the Giants. I'm saying because it's the Giants, you can't ignore that. If this were the Patriots or somebody else, I get your point. But the Giants have had a history of really elevating you when they like you loyalty, and really yeah. degrading you when they don't because of that loyalty factor. I don't think we can ignore that.